Hi friends, today I will talk about the topic understanding of SpO2 and PO2 or the relationship between SpO2 and PO2. In this, first we will see uh, what are they and next how they are related to each other means the oxygen dissociation curve and finally the factors affecting SpO2 and PO2. Okay, let's begin. So the first one. SpO2. What is SpO2? It is an estimation of amount of oxygen in the blood. More specifically, it is the percentage of oxygenated hemoglobin compared with the total amount of hemoglobin in the blood. Okay, for example, if the SpO2 is 96 percentage, that means 96 percentage of our hemoglobin total hemoglobin is combined with oxygen and four percentage is not combined with oxygen i think it's clear okay then what is po2 it is the tension or force which is facilitating the oxygen hemoglobin binding we need to maintain an optimum pressure to facilitate this binding process which is between 75 to 100 mmHg. We know that how the normal gas exchange occurs like while, uh, while we breathe in the oxygen is reaching uh, to the alveoli where the partial pressure of oxygen become high and uh, the, de the deoxygenated blood is reaching to the alveoli through the capillaries and the partial pressure of oxygen is high in the alveoli and low in the deoxygenated blood. Okay, so from the higher force, the oxygen is will move through the permeable membrane to the oxy deoxygenated blood, where the pressure partial pressure of oxygen is low, and the binding process will happen. The hemoglobin will bind with it, these oxygen molecules one hemoglobin can carry four oxygen molecules the co2 also like that okay the, per, the partial pressure of co2 is high in the deoxygenated blood and low in the alveoli so it will move from the deoxygenated blood to the alveoli to maintain the normal breathing process and once the blood is reaching to the tissue the same thing the partial pressure of oxygen is high in the blood and low in the tissue because tissue is already uh, using the oxygen and this from the higher force from the blood the oxygen molecule will go to the tissue okay so what will happen if the partial pressure of oxygen is not maintaining adequately the total uh, failure of breathing process or total failure of gas exchange will occur and collapse now we will see the relation between SpO2 and PO2 that is called oxygen dissociation curve. Let's see the graph. So here we will see the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. This is a graphical uh, representation of relationship between the SpO2 over the PO2. So as the normal graph we have uh, two axes x and uh, y. The y axis here it is uh, for the hemoglobin saturation SpO2 and uh, the x axis the horizontal it is for the partial pressure of oxygen PO2 okay so as we all know the normal breathing process the once uh, we will breathe in the atmospheric uh, per air it contains a 21 percentage of oxygen and once it is reached to the alveoli the partial pressure of the oxygen in the alveoli will become almost uh, uh, 80 to 100 percentage let's suppose here 100 percentage for easy understanding and after the oxygenation of the blood the hemoglobin uh, it can bind four oxygen molecules so the hemoglobin, almost all the hemoglobin, it's the normal around uh, 96 to 100 percentage of hemoglobin is binding with the oxygen molecules. So here we can see the percentage of hemoglobin, how much hemoglobin is binding with the oxygen molecules. 
So the maximum is 100% SPO SPO is 100%. Let's suppose it is 100% for easy understanding. And as the blood moves out from the lungs throughout the body, the partial pressure of the oxygen is decreasing towards to zero and the SpO2 because once the blood is flowing through the body the oxygen the hemoglobin is delivering the oxygen to the tissues so uh, naturally the SpO2 will decline towards to zero okay so this is we can see here the graph S shaped graph this curve this is called oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve dissociation means it's delivering offloading okay so here let's suppose here is 100 po2 from the starting point the spo2 it is 100 here okay once it is moving down declining the po2 declining as well the hemoglobin saturation so let's suppose here it is the 60 and uh, the SpO2 is declining to 90%. Okay, from 80 to 100, we will not see much difference here. It is almost 96 to 100 percentage. But here, as the PO2 is declining from 60 to downwards, the SpO2 is falling very dramatically here. So uh, here, if it is uh, 45 PO2, the SpO2 here we can see it is reached to 80. So the hemoglobin is offloading the oxygen. Uh, as I explained before, the partial pressure where where the partial pressure of oxygen is high, so that's the time the hemoglobin is attaching with the oxygen molecules or binding with the oxygen molecules. We call it affinity of oxygen for hemoglobin will be high with the high PO2 okay so if the PO2 is declining towards to zero if it is 25 let's suppose it is 25 the PO2 uh, the SpO2 is declined to 50 and there are some factors affecting uh, this uh, system so sometimes the we can see the graph it is shifted to the right and it can shift to the left let's see how it is happening here we can see right shift and left shift okay so the right shift means uh, the reduced oxygen affinity affinity the binding tendency of uh, uh, hemoglobin with the oxygen will be reduced and increase oxygen delivery to the tissues. So there are uh, the factors like the, if the patient is acidotic uh, or feverish and high 2 and 3 BPG means the diphosphoglycerate it's uh, by pro the product of uh, glycosis if a person is uh, doing more activities there will be more glycosis so this will increase and the oxygen affinity will be reduced for the hemoglobin and because the patient the, the person need more oxygen the hemoglobin will of course deliver more oxygen to the tissues and low O2 affinity is be variant let's see here the blue line it is shifted rightwards okay so here we can see uh, let's suppose here it is 40 see the graph if it is the normal the black one uh, it's supposed to get the SpO2 around uh, 75 here okay and in the blue line it is shifted to right means the Hb is the hemoglobin is uh, delivering more oxygen to the tissues this uh, this time so with the PO2 40, we will meet here. So the SpO2 here it is 60. So there is some difference here we can see. So the same way it is reach it is uh, shifting to the left side. Let's suppose it is left side shift. 
what will happen? Increase oxygen affinity means the hemoglobin will not deliver much oxygen to the tissues and reduce the oxygen delivery to the tissue. This is what I said. Okay. What are the factors affecting this uh, situation? This is more uh, high in pH means the blood is alkalotic and uh, low temperature hypothermia and low 2,3 BPG. As I said before, the diphosphoglycerate is low. Uh, fetal hemoglobin, this is entirely different with the, our uh, uh, respiratory system, so we know that. And increased CO2, meta, met hemoglobinemia and high O2 affinity HB variance. Let's see in the graph, what is the difference? So here, the red line, it is left shifted. The same as I said before, it, the P, if the PO2 is 40, let's see the graph here with the black one, it is normal. It, we are supposed to get the SPO2 75 and with the red, what will happen? Here, okay. So it is above 80 it's around 85 okay so this is the difference okay so if the graph is shifted leftwards means the hemoglobin is not delivering much of the oxygen molecules to the tissues as normal so it is uh, saving <laughs> like the hemoglobin is uh, holding the oxygen it's not delivering uh, to the tissue as we need that. okay we need to keep in mind there are some factors affecting our spo2 measurement like hypotension if the systolic bp less than 80 and uh, anything affecting the blood flow to the distal area where we are keeping the probe then av fistula uh, the elevated limb above the heart and uh, anemia or coldness also can affect the SpO2 measurement. Then the factors affecting PO2, like high altitude where the pressure of oxygen is low. We know that if there is low pressure for oxygen, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen will become also low. Then the binding process will not occur properly. Uh, and any obstruction in the pulmonary system. And then poor concentration of hemoglobin, like anemia then any uh, heart condition which is causing mixing of the blood inside the heart okay i hope you enjoy this session see you soon with the next classes bye bye